Beruchim Haboim. Welcome everyone. We're about to begin Be'ezra Asa Hashem together on Dat Sadik Beis, Amud Beis, 11 lines from the bottom at the new Mishnah. Our Mishnah discusses Meleches Hoitzo, not only when one person carries from Rishus to the Rishus, but even when two people are going to carry from one Rishus to another Rishus. Says the Mishnah, Kika If a person carries a loaf of bread from one Rishus to another Rishus, He's going to be chayiv, and that's straightforward, no chiddish. In contrast, however, if two people, however, take out that kikar, that loaf of bread, then they will be potter. Another case says the Mishnah, If indeed it's a loaf of bread, as long as the day is table at the chasana, whereby one person cannot carry it, it's too cumbersome, he needs somebody else to help him, and the two of them bring it out from the Shusha Yochid to the Shusha Rabbim, they will both be chayiv a carbon chatos. Rabbi Shimon, Poiter, however, Rabbi Shimon argues and says, even in that case, he will be Potter. Says the Gemara, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, Rav the name of Rav, Amrei, Lo Amar Abai, others say it was Abai that said this statement. Another say it was in the Bryce, it was taught the following. In a case where two people are able to carry the item, for example, in the case of the Kika that we mentioned in the first case of the Mishnah, that one person can carry it alone. Rabbi Meir Mechayev. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shim, Poitrin. Rabbi Meir is the opinion that nonetheless, they will be, both be chayiv, but Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon say in this case they will be potter when it's yachal and yachal. Ze'eno yachal ve'ze'eno yachal. Second case, where both cannot carry the object on their own, they need the other one. So here Rabbi Yehuda agrees with Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir, mechayivin. Rabbi Shimon, poiter. So here, again, there's a machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir agree that they will be chayiv in a case where Zen Eino Yachol Vezeh Eino Yachol and Rabbi Shimon is pointer. Ze Yachol Vezeh Eino Yachol Divrei Hakol Chayev In this case, nobody argues when one is able to do so and pick it up on his own whereas the other one cannot then we say that he is Chayev and everybody agrees to that. The Gemara will explain it's talking about the one indeed who was Yachol. So we have three different cases there's a machlokas in the first two cases of first one being ze yochel ve yochel. Rabbi Meir says he's chay, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon says potter. Ze eino yochel ve ze eino yochel. There Rabbi Yehuda agrees with Rabbi Meir that he's going to be chay, Rabbi Shimon says potter. And then the third case, ze yochel ve ze eino yochel. Everybody agrees that the one who is yochel is going to be chayof. Says the Gemara. Tanya Nami Hoch, we also have a b'raisa like this. Hamoitzi kikar l'rishus harabim chayiv. If a person takes out a kikar, a loaf of bread by himself, he's going to be chayiv, and he said that's not a chiddish. Hotziu shnayim. However, if two people take that out, Rabbi Meir mechayiv. Rabbi Meir says he's going to. They are both going to be chayiv for taking out the kikar together, without distinction. Rabbi Yehuda makes a distinction. He says. If they're not able to take it out together, by themselves rather, they need to take it out together, like the case of the long chala, the size of the day is table, then we say that they're going to be chayes, says Rabbi Yehuda. V'imlav, if not, peturin. Rabbi Shimon, poiter, Rabbi Shimon says, poiter nonetheless, even if it's zeh, eno yachol, v'zeh eno yachol. Now the Gemara asks, Minahani Mili, where do we know the case of Ze Yachel, the Ze Yachel is going to be Potter, according to Rabbi Yehuda? The Tanu Rabbono on the Gemara brings a Braisa, and the Braisa quotes the Posuk. I want to quote you the entire Posuk. Vim Nefesh Achas Techto Bishkogo Mi Am If one of the people of the people of the land were to then do an Avera Bishoigeg, 
Be'asoiso. Achas mi mitzvahs Hashem asher lo sa'aseno ve'oshem. And he does one of the mitzvahs of Hashem that he's not supposed to be done. And he is found guilty. That's the posuk. Now the b'risa brings this posuk and it says be'asoiso. And he performs this mitzvah he's not, that's not supposed to be done. And he does so b'shoigig. Says the b'risa ha'oise es kulo v'lo ya'oise es mitzvahso. That which is says ba'asoiso comes to then implied that only if one person does it, he's going to be chayiv, but not if he's going to do only part of that. Only when one person does the entire thing himself. Ketzad, the Bryce explains, Shnaim shahoyu oichzin. If two people were hold an object together and do a molacha that indeed one can do on his own. So it's case of ze yochel ve yochel. Explains the Bryce. Bimal gez v'loigzin. It's talking about a Mazleg, a malgez is really a mazleg, it's a fork. And this type of pitchfork is a fork where they would then gather together grain. So it would be a malach of me'amer. Bekarakar v'shoivtin. Or take a stick and he would then um, <clears throat> pat down the, the, um, all of the threads that were in the loom. And therefore, that's a malach of Moisech, or Mesach, rather. Bekulmus v'koisvin. They would both hold a quill, and they would write together. Bekane v'hoitziu l'rishuzah They would both hold a reed, and carry it into the Rishus Rabin from the Rishus HaYochi. Yocho yiu chayovin. Ask the Bryce that I might think that they are both going to be chayov. Tamulor v'asoyse. That's why the Apostle says v'asoyse, teaching me. How he says, Only when he does the entire, <laughs> excuse me, the entire malacha will he be chayiv, <laughs> and not only not partial malacha. Says the Gemara on top of Tzadik Gimel Amar Aleph, the eagle shall devela v'hitzua l'rishus haram. In the case where there's a large round cake of dried figs, which is too cumbersome for one person to carry. And therefore, the two people carry it together from Rishus Yochi to the Rishus Rabim, or Bekar Rav Ohitziu al Rishus Rabim, or it's a large beam which is too cumbersome for one person to carry on his own, and therefore two people carry it from the Rishus Yochi to the Rishus Rabim. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer im lo yochel echad lo hitzioi v'hitziu shnayim chayavim v'imlab peturi. Rabbi Yehuda says in this brayse that if one person is not able to do so on his own and they both do it together, then they will both be chayiv. And if not, because they're both able to do it and they both do it together, then potter. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Afal Pisha lo yochel, echel lo hitzioi, v'hitziu shnayim betun. Rabbi Shimon argues and he says, even if two people are not able to do it on their own, nonetheless, they're going to be potter. Lekach nemar be'asoiso. Because that's what it means in the Pesach of Asoyis, it says Rabbi Shimon. Yochid she'osso chayiv, shnayim she'asu apturin. Only when one person does the malacha will it be chayiv. When two people do the malacha, regardless of whether they're yochel or eno yochel, if they're both yochel or they're both eno yochel, it would be potter based on this verse. That's the b'risa. Says the Gemara, b'may kamifli, what is the machloikis in this b'risa? Ubehai kro. The Gemara explains in the following verse that we quoted before. V'im nefesh achas techto b'shkogo me'am ha'oret be'asoiso. From here the Gemara says is a machloik is how to learn this posuk. Rabbi Shimon saw v'atloso mi'ute kesiva. There are three different mi'utim that we learn from this verse as follows. Nefesh techto, achas techto, there are three different exclusions based on these words. One to exclude a case where he one picks up and makes an akira from the Rishus HaYochi while the second person then takes the object and he makes an hanocha in the Rishus HaRabim. And the second one comes to exclude a case where one is able and the other one is able and they do it together. They're going to be potter as well. And according to Rabbi Shimon, this comes to exclude a third item where both are not able to do the malacha on their own and still, when they do it together, they will be potter. 
Rabbi Yehuda, Chad Lemeute Ze Oike, Veze Maniach. Rabbi Yehuda agrees that the first one is coming to exclude a case where one person does the Akir while the other one does the Hanochal. He'll be Potter. They'll be Potter. The Chad Lemeute Ze Yachal, Veze Yachal. And he also agrees with the second scenario where both are able on their own to do the Malacha and yet they do it together, they're going to be Potter. However, he argues on the third mute. In this case, Rabbi Yehuda says it comes to exclude when a person got a hoiro that chelev is mutter, and then he ate chelev, he will be potter according to Rabbi Yehuda. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda argues on Rabbi Shimon that indeed in the case when ze eno yachol ve ze eno yachol, according to Rabbi Shimon, they will be chayev, but according to Rabbi Sorry, according to Rabbi Shimon, they will be potter, but according to Rabbi Yehuda, they will be chayof. The Rabbi Shimon, Yochid, She'osir, Boharaz, Bestin, Chayef. Rabbi Shimon, his opinion is different. He says that that which it says, Yochid, She'osir, Boharaz, Bestin, when the Bestin said this is chaylev and it's mutter, and he ate the chaylev based on their say so, according to Rabbi Shimon, he will be chayef. Rabbi Meir, mi ksiv nefesh tachto. Rabbi Meir now comes and he argues on their drasha by learning three different miutim. He says, you can't learn three miutim from this posuk. There's only two miutim that come out from this posuk. As follows. Achas techto. Be'asoiso. Oh, sorry. He says, mi ksiv nefesh techto. Does it say in the verse, nefesh techto? It doesn't say nefesh techto. If you go back to the verse, it says ve'im nefesh achas techto. So how can you then break it up into two different miutim and say nefesh techto and achas techto? It's only really one miut, says Rabbi Meir. Achas techto, ba'asoisa techto. So you only have two miutim altogether, not three. Tre miute kesive. Chad lemiute ze oike veze maniach. Says Rabbi Meir, this comes one to exclude when one does the Akira, and does, one does the Hanocha, that we all agree with Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Meir agrees as well. And this, he says, is the second mute. When one is told by the Bezdin that this is a Chelev, and it's Mutter, and he eats it on their say so, he will be Potter. So this is the sheet of Rabbi Meir. So it comes out, we have three different sheetas over here. We have the sheet of Beginning with Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says that Ze Yachol is going to, and Ze Yachol is going to be Potter. He says in a case where Ze Oiker Veze Meniach is going to be Potter. And Ze Eino Yachol Veze Eino Yachol is also going to be Potter. So that's Shita's Rabbi Shimon. Three Miyutim. Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda says they're all for three Miyutim, but there's only two Miyutim regarding two people doing a Molochah. And that is as follows, when one says is oikir and the other one is meniach, that's potter, as well as the second case where ze yochel ze yochel is potter. However, ze eno yochel ze eno yochel would be chayiv, because the third miyut is coming to say that if the bezdin were to say something is mutter and he then does an aver based on that bezdin say so, he's going to be potter. And the last opinion we had was the shita of Rabbi Meir, who learns that there are only two miyutim, the case being ze Oikir vezemeniach is potter, and the case being where Bezdin comes to then say something is mutter, like chaylev, and he eats the chaylev, he will be potter. However, according to Rabbi Meir, in both cases where ze yachol veze yachol or ze eno yachol veze eno yachol, Rabbi Meir would say in both cases he would be chayev. Says the Gemara, Omar Mar, Gemara brings back the previous statement. Ze yachol veze eno yachol divre hakol chayev. We made a statement that said everybody agrees whether it's Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Meir, that in the case of Ze Yochel, Ze Eino Yochel, that he's going to be Chayiv. Ask the Gemara, Hai Meinayu Mechayiv. Which one of the two are we talking about who's going to be Chayiv? It's the one who's Yochel, or the one that's Eino Yochel. Omar Rav Chizda, Ze She Yochel. The one who's able to then do the Malacha, he's the one who's going to be Chayiv, even though he's doing it together with somebody who's Eino Yochel. Because this one who's not Yochel, what is he doing? What is he adding? He's helping him. He can't do it alone, but he's still helping him. 
Omar le Messiah ain boy mamish. The Messiah, the one who's helping him, he is not doing anything. He's not doing anything of of of, of substance because after all, the one who's yachah can do it all on his own, and therefore only the one who's yachah is going to be held responsible. Omar Azvid mishmei derava af anan nami tanina. We also learned this that a Messiah is ain boy mamish. Messiah that he's one who helps is not. We have a scenario where you have a Zov who is sitting on a Mita, on a bed with four legs. And each underneath each one of these legs of the bed is a Talis. The Mishnah says, Tmois All four of these talisois are going to be Tomei from the Midras, from the Zov who's sitting on the bed. And what's the Chiddush? The Chiddush is that we know that for a Midras to metame, that which is Mishka Valova has to be that rove of his Kvedus, of his weight, is onto this, onto the Mishkav. So over here you have four legs. So here you can say it's his weight is being divided in four different parts. So there's no rove at each of these parts. So why are these talisos, why should they be tome? But the answer is because all four of these legs need each other. It's a case of ze eno yachol veze eno yachol. Because after all, if you have only one leg, it can't hold up the entire bed. And even if you have only three legs, it won't be able to hold up the entire bed. The bed will fall. So therefore, every single one of these legs is considered to be significant, whereby all four of these Talisois are going to be Tomei. Rabbi Shimon Mitara, because Rabbi Shimon says, we don't hold of Ze Eino Yachov Ze Eino Yachov, and therefore you don't have Roiv of the Kvedus of the, of the Zov that going to then Metame any one of these Talisois. The Mishnah goes on to say, Haya Roiche Vagave Behemo, Vidal Taliois Tachas Ragleya Behemo. If you have a Zov sitting on a Behemo, and underneath the feet of each leg of the behemo is a talis. So here the Mishnah says the following din. Taharois. They are going to be tar, each and every one of these talisois. Because the behemo can really support itself on three legs, whereby the fourth leg is just helping the support, but it's not necessary. Be'etzem. You can really stand on three, and the fourth is just helping out. It's Messiaya to the other three legs. So we see over here a proof. Va'amai, why is it so? Why do we say over here that indeed that they're not going to be? And let me just add that the reason why all of them are into the Horois is because since one of them is really only Messiah, and they, the animal only needs three legs to support itself. So therefore, each and every leg, we don't know which one is the one that is considered to be the one that's Messiah, whereby we say that each one is considered to be the one Messiah. So therefore, none of them have the rove of the weight of the, of the Zov that's on its talis, whereby all three, or really all four talisois, are going to be tohar. Ask the Gemara to explain, Va'amai, why is this so? It must be because ha Messiah bahadi hadodi. It must be because that one of the legs are coming to then support the others. They're coming to support each other. La mishum da'amin, it must be the Messiah ain't bo mamish. We can prove from here that a Messiah, the one that is helping out, is ain't bo mamish. And therefore, just like we said before, ze ain't no yachol, ve ze ain't no yachol. Sorry, ze ain't no yachol, ve ze yachol. So the one whose yachol is going to be chayim because he doesn't need the ain't no yachol. Omar Rabbi Yehuda Midiskrato, Rabbi Yehuda Midriskato comes and he asks on this last proof. Really, I'll say to you, Messiah boy mamish. A Messiah does have mamish, and you can't prove for me in this case that we just quoted as being a support. The shiny hocha here it's different in the case where the talisas are under each leg of the behemo. The akro lo legamre, because it's not just that the fourth leg gives some support to the other three legs, but you can be oikir, the fourth leg altogether, you don't need it altogether. And therefore, 
It's not even a Messiah. Says the Gemara, the Kivan the Zimnin Akor Akro Ho the Vezimin Akro Ho Lahabe Kizaha Mishapech. He says, and since indeed that this one could be Oikir or the other one could be Oikir, that means you don't need one of the legs, then if that would be the case, then we would look at it as a Kizav HaMeshapech. And we know, as the Gemara is going to bring now, that the Mishnah says that a Zav HaMeshapech will then, out of Suffolk, say that each one is going to be Tomei, as follows. Milo Tznan doesn't it teach in the following Mishnah, Zav Shehaya Mutol Al Hei Sav Solim, Oy Al Hei Pundois, if you have a Zav that is lying on five benches, or on five money pouches. Now the money pouches we're talking about is very wide and also thick. So it's typically lied upon. So you have a Zov who's laying down on these benches or on these money pouches. So it depends. If it's La'or Chon, says the Mishnah, then Tmeim. If he is lying on the length of all of these benches, he lies on each one or all of these money pouches, then they're all going to be Tmeim. However, if it's L'Rochvon, if he's going to lie on the width, then it's not rove of his kvedus on either one of these safsolim or either one of these money pouches. So they're going to be tohor. Yoshein, if he's sleeping, so even though he might have started, he looks like he's sleeping on the width, or even if he wakes up, it's on the width, but you don't know over the course of his sleep if he moved. Typically, a person who's sleeping can move. So therefore, it could be that he moved and his length went on the length of these of these benches and the length of these money pouches. Suffolk mishapech alein t'mein. And therefore we don't know. And if suffolk, we would say it's t'mein. So so too over here. If you're going to tell me that one of the four legs of the animal is okar, so therefore each one is a suffolk, which one is necessary for the other three legs, whereby we're going to say that they're all going to be making the talisa is t'mein. Ella must be therefore la mishum da amrina messiah ain boy mamish. Rather, it must be talking about where there's a messiah, and we're talking about over here messiah ain boy mamish.